Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is Daytime Diva Season 1, Episode 6, and the name of this episode is We Are Family. Okay, a lot happened in this episode, so I'm pretty much going to narrow it down, you know, to the actual characters, and pretty much try to melt, try to put all the stories together. Okay, now, um, Maxine, we saw from the last episode that Maxine is mad at William because William knew about Sean and Nina. He also knew about Nina being pregnant, and he never said anything to Maxine about it. And Maxine is pissed off because William didn't tell her, and William knew the whole time. And so she pretty much is just paying him dust. And and we actually see in this episode that she actually goes on a date with this guy named Ben, who's actually played by Richard T. Jones. And he is literally like the 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 exact parallel of Maxine. Like as far as their business etiquette, their favorite drink, you know, the way they think in terms of, you know, of running their corporations, they are literally like just alike. And, you know, she was actually set up by the guest host of this week, which is her name is um um Cecile James. And she's actually played by Eve. And she's pretty much, um, you know, um, a relationship guru. Um, she, pretty much writes, she pretty much writes this book about alpha women and how they can, you know, be successful at dating. And, you know, and everybody was, like, asking her questions about their relationships and their things. Like, for example, um, during the show, they all had questions that they had to ask. Those were audience questions. These crazy bitches didn't even ask the questions that the audience um, had. They asked questions, you know, in response to them, you know, because all of them were kind of having issues. For example, Nina. Nina and Sean right now are, are not really in sync ever since she told them about that, um, that she really didn't win that pull surprise and that that, that, um, that article that she that she that was written was actually a guy who died. She just put her name on it and just ended it. And she's pretty much been living off of this pull of surprise, you know, glory ever since. And it's also her winning the Pulitzer is what got her the job on the lunch hour. So her and Sean they're talking, but you can definitely see that the that the trust has been broken because now he's seeing that sinister side of Nina. That Nina literally has lived, a, has had a career that's based on a lie. So he's really not dealing with her. Heather, on the other hand, with her crazy, you know, um, Annie Oakley <laughs> acting behind, she is a trip because... Um, we definitely saw from the last episode that her and Brad pretty much split up. And she pretty much told Brad that she's tired of pretending. Well, in this episode, um, Brad got tired of pretending too because little did she know, she's like, um, they're in their dressing rooms and um, Ramona, oh yeah, and there was a lot with Ramona and, and Leon. Leon is a is a little shit. And I'm going to definitely talk about, talk about them in a, in a second. But, uh, Ramona goes in there, um, you know, to, to like, give them their phones or whatever, and, um, you know, so they can, like, make their last text or do whatever they have to do before they go in there. And then she walks up to um, Heather. She's like, I'm sorry about Brad. And she's like, oh, what happened? Did he run into traffic or something? He's like, no. Nah. And then, like, Kitty was like, no, nah, but he ran into a piece of ass. So it's now out in open that he has moved on. And here it is, she's trying to um, go to couples therapy, but she's going alone because her husband's not there. So he's like, I'm over this shit. And now he's just doing him and don't give no fucks about, he gives no fucks about Heather. So Heather pretty much is just going through it in this episode. And she did, and, um, and also um, another thing that went down in this episode is Kibby. Kibby is celebrating her one year sobriety. Really, she's only been sober for 31 days, but that's what everybody's thinking. And her, her, um, her, um, her drug coach, Julian, suggested she should have a celebration, her one year of sobriety. You know, by you celebrating your sobriety, you're pretty much putting yourself in the, in that, in that space where you will continue, where you continue to maintain your sobriety. 
So she's all for it. They even got like, you know, you know, pills and you know, they even got like drinks, you know, that are non alcoholic, so everything is a sobriety. Tell me why the hell Heather's dumbass brought wine to a sobriety party. So while at the sobriety party, damn Heather gets drunk as shit and then, you know, starts to, um, and we definitely saw in this episode that there is a connection between Kibby and Julian. Like, Kibby is really feeling him, and he's really feeling her. But, um, here it is, Heather is so drunk and so out of her mind, and she's mad that her husband has moved on with this other woman, and she ain't got nobody. So, she literally just at the party, the sober party, decides to throw herself on, you know, to Julian. I mean, but she was drunk, and he wasn't trying to go for it, but then Kibby walked in, and it became a big explosion. And uh, now to talk about Cecile's character, you know, Cecile is pretty much a relationship guru. You know, she's about, you know, the alpha woman, about women taking their power and finding men that respect their power rather than try to, de rather than a man who wants to diminish her power, you know. And she actually sets up Maxine with Ben. And Ben is this, um, I think he's a real estate developer, and he's just like Maxine. And we see that they, they, the first date went well, then they had a second date. The second date was at her sobriety party. And it was funny because we saw that Kitty was, you know, wanting to invite everybody to her sobriety party. So she invited the cast. And then when she turned her back, they was like, oh, we ain't going to that shit. Fuck that. <laughs> and then Maxine was like, no, you, all, you are going. We're all going. We're going to support her, and you all are going to be there. So... So, um, we saw that that went down. And, you know, it gets to the point where everybody is coming to Cecile for questions about their relationships. Like, uh, you know, Nina has issues with trust. Um, uh, Kibby has a love interest and she wants to know whether she should pursue it or let it go. Um, then you have, like, um, you have Heather who's asking, how do you move on? How can you um, move on from, you know, how can you get over someone that you love? You know, so she still loves Brad, but Brad obviously ain't thinking about her ass. So they all are asking questions, personal questions, and you see throughout the episode, they, they, they had the sobriety party. Damn, um, damn uh, Cecile is in line waiting to get into the bathroom, and they literally one by one kept pulling her out of the line for the bathroom to ask her questions. She would ask a question and, you know, and it just got to the point, it, it just started to piss her off because she couldn't enjoy herself because they kept pulling her, you know, left and right asking relationship questions when she's supposed to be there enjoying herself. So the next, so pretty much the last show that they did, you know, in the episode, you know, they asked her questions. She's like, girl, do what you want. I don't give a damn. Shit. <laughs> I was cracking up. I thought that was hilarious. Um, um, also, um, we also see that, uh, you know, William, you know, it knows about Maxine going on these dates with this guy Ben. And William pretty much kind of checked Maxine, and he let her know that, look, um, Sean didn't come to you because he wanted to come to someone that wouldn't judge him and someone who could possibly understand, you know, things about, you know, love and togetherness, you know, some of the things that you're not, some of your strong, something that's not your strong suit to talk about. And he didn't want to be judged. He didn't want you, you know, because you know how you, because you, we know that, you know, matching could get could give, give three shits about Nina, but we see in this episode that her, her, um, pretty much her, um, her treatment of Nina has changed because Nina is pregnant with her grand, with her grandchild. So we see that um, Maxine is now starting to move in that direction. But it took William to check her to let her know that look, you just can't admit that you're wrong, or better yet, you're just you're, you're in denial that you're wrong, and that's the problem. You know, he wanted to come to somebody who would hear him out and wouldn't judge him. And you know how you are. That's why he didn't come to you with this. That's why he came to me. 
and me being a man, I'm not going to break the guy code and tell you what we talk about. So actually, I have respect for William, but not telling her. And we see throughout the episode, you know, she was kind of like, you know, brushing, you know, William off. And she's like, yeah, well, hello, William. And I don't need you to open the door for me. William still open that door. Like, bitch, you ain't going to play games with me. I know you and your feelings, but you know at the end of the day what we have. You know, after all we've been through, you're not going to blow me off. And we also see that, um, remember, um, you know, Philip and uh, Anna, you know, their messy asses, you know, went to talk to a detective about the night that Ted died, and they're pretty much throwing a hint that y'all should look into Maxine because Maxine was one of the last people that saw him alive. So now this detective is building a case. He came to the um to the uh, you know to the to the building to talk to William. William completely played dumb and was like, "Look, I'm a doorman. I don't know what the hell happened that night. You know, I just know that Ted and and Maxine were a power couple. That's all I know." Played it like a fiddle, and he the, the, the detective gave him his card. But then we later on see that this detective is really building a case against Maxine. She's the main person. He has redone an autopsy on Ted's body, and he is putting everything together to try to take Maxine down. So we definitely saw that go on. Now, now as far as Nina and Sean's situation. You know, as I said, they, they were, they're very dissonant. They weren't really connecting. I mean, they're, they're talking to each other, but it's not like, it's not like where they were before, where they were, like, in love. It's kind of like they're, they're, where they're pretty much just, they're kind of, like, communicating, but yet it's, it's a very, it's, it's a very limited communication. And we actually see a scene where, um, where Nina and Shauna at the party, there's a lot, most of the food there Nina can't eat because either she's allergic or she can't have it. And then, you know, Sean came and got her some sliders and she was happy because she finally had some food. And then we see that Ben comes over and, you know, he knows about Nina. He's like, oh, man, that story you, the story that you wrote, you know, that was an amazing story and it definitely deserved a Pulitzer. And I'm so glad that, you know, that story was told. And she's like, absolutely, it was a story that needed to be told, and I was glad to tell it. And as soon as Ben leaves, Shauna's like, wow, you can lie so easily. It's like you have no guilt whatsoever that this whole full surprise thing was built on a lie. You know, you, you were just comfortable living this. And then we see later on... Um, you know, towards the um, the in towards the, the last thing we had with um, Nina and Sean, you know, Nina pretty much kind of approached Sean and she's like, "Look, I just want to ask you this, and I just want you to be real with me. You're not going to tell anybody else about this, are you?" So Sean took offense to it because Sean really is in his feelings, and he's now starting to see how Nina really operates. That Nina is very manipulative. And she's all about, you know, she's all about keeping up an image. And she wants to, you know, she, she's kind of built this whole Pulitzer surprise winning journalist, you know, um, ideology. She's not going to break it. And he, and like Sean is now starting to see that, yeah, she's all, she is about power. She is about, you know, privilege. She's about her own prestige. And he's kind of over it. And it got to the point where he's like, the funny thing about it is that you would actually think that I would do to you the, the same thing that your husband Andrew did. And she's like, look, I, I need to know. Like, are you going to say anything? Are you going to talk about this? I mean, do I have to worry about this getting out? And Sean was like, you know what? All this time I thought you were, obviously, I, I, the person who I was in love with, obviously you're not that girl. It's over. So I'm like, damn. But I'm saying, Nina, that's what you get. You know, you can't win when you play dirty. And you was you pretty much did a whole bunch of messy shit to get Sean. You know, got in this. And, and pretty much Sean, you know, was wholeheartedly in love with Nina. But Nina, on the other hand, you know, 
you know, she's in love with Sean, but she was, you know, in this arranged marriage, and she was going to play it out. And it's to the point where he just realized that, you know, he thought that she was like this honest and sincere person. Now he's realizing that he really don't know her ass at all. And I'm like, Angie tried to warn you. I mean, but you you pretty much flexed your chest and was trying to, you know, boss at Andrew. But Andrew was letting you know that, look, you know, she a messy bitch. And now you see for yourself that Nina's messy. So he ended the relationship, which is crazy because Nina's pregnant with his child. So you know that this is going to cause even more drama involving them. So we saw that go down. Um, now, as far as Kibby and her sobriety party, um, it first was going off with a hitch, but then when she goes downstairs, I mean, pretty much Maxine was like, okay, you need to do a speech or whatever and talk about, you know, um, you know, talk about your one-year sobriety and, you know, thank all your guests and all of that. So she does the speech, and in the speech, she actually dedicates, the, you know, her sobriety, you know, to, to this person that really means a lot to her. And she mentioned Julian, but Julian's nowhere to be seen. And we see that Julian is actually downstairs with Heather. Heather's drunk, and Heather is trying to throw herself at him. Because, you know, her question was like, you know, because like pretty much what, what um, Cecile told Heather, you know, in regards to her question, like how do you get over someone that you love, she pretty much said that, hey, throw yourself on to the next available guy and, you know, you know, just keep it pushing. So now she's literally trying to take that advice by throwing herself on to, to Julian. Now, Julian is a very charismatic guy. And she took him being charismatic and being kind to her as him flirting, when obviously we can tell he's in love with Kibby. And Kibby's in love with him. But here it is, um, <laughs> damn Heather's trying to, you know, you know, give him a blowjob, and that's when Kibby and the whole party walked in, and her and, and Kibby... And Heather started going back and forth. They, they, she's pretty much, you know, calling Heather a slut. And, she, and then <laughs> this damn Heather's like, um, I know they're not calling me a slut. I mean, with all the blowjobbies you've done. And she's like, blowjobbies? What the hell? <laughs> I thought that was really funny. And then, she, you know, Kibby just goes off. She's like, you know what? I'm over this shit. You know. I, like, here it is, it's supposed to be my, about my sobriety, but obviously nobody here gives a shit about that, because this bitch coming up in here with wine and drinking, and this guy, you know, Julian, you the one who said it was my idea, to, you said, you the one who came up with the idea that I should have a sobriety party, I didn't even want to do this crap, I didn't want to do any of this shit, and then, also to realize that, you know, Everybody, everybody in the staff is here because Maxine told them they had to be there. They're not here because they really care about me. They not care about my sobriety. And besides, I'm not even a year. I mean, this whole year sobriety is all bullshit. It's, I, it ain't even been that long. And then, like, Maxine was like, Kitty, shut up. But then later on, she tells her that really it's not a year sobriety. It's really 31 days because when Maxine was in her coma, she relapsed. But she says, okay. We can just call it that, you know. You just had, um, you just had a, a a mishap. But then she's like, you know, are you gonna drink this? Are you gonna continue to be sober? Or are you gonna go backwards? And she chooses to um, to stay on the straight and narrow and do what she got to do. But uh, but yeah. But then. Also, as far as Maxine, Maxine, even though this guy Ben looks like the perfect guy, they compliment each other, they pretty much are very power heads and stuff, but then they pretty much, but then Maxine starts to realize at the end of the day, they're too much alike, and there really is no difference, there really is no, um, there, there really is like no, no difference between them, they literally are like, are like, you know, parallel to each other. I mean, we even saw that, um, you know, when they was in the limo or whatever, he goes off on his limo job and saying, like, man, what the hell are you going down this way? Go the other way. What the hell? And then, you know, Maxine was like, well, the way he was going was actually a quicker way. And besides, you would actually skip the, um, the theater district and you won't be in traffic. So he's like, 
or what else? Like, well, aren't you going to tell them? And he's like, oh, no. You know, huh, I won't do that. You, you, like, when you, when you admit you're wrong to your subordinates, you lose power. And then all of a sudden, you know, he starts to kind of make his move on Maxine, but Maxine rejects him. It was like, like, and he's like, what's up? You know, what's going on? I thought we were a lot alike. She's like, yeah, that's the issue. We're too much alike. And at times, I can be an asshole. So get your hand off me. And we see that her and William make up, and he lets her know that the police came here asking questions about the night the kid died. So we're going to see where that's going to happen. But um, that's my review, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. Oh, yeah, I did remember something. Damn Ramona and Leon. Ramona is still being, you know, she is still being treated like sloppy seconds. And Leon is literally treating her like shit. You know, Leon is acting like he done fucking made it. You know, because he's been, you know, he's pretty much now got a producer slot. He is just feeling himself. He's walking around like his ass don't stink. You know, they even show the scene like after the sobriety party. He's making out with this girl. And, you know, it's treating like, and it's, and it's treating Ramona like she's the help. I'm like, Ramona is about to flip and do some crazy shit because we've seen that, Mo, that Ramona got a crazy side. And on top of it, she's the one with the real talent. She knows how to be a producer. She knows how to do everything better than Leon. But Leon keeps advancing. So she's going to get to the point where she is going to do, she's going to go, she's going, she's going to go, Becky bat shit crazy and she's gonna do something she's gonna do something out of this world and she's gonna fuck Leon up because Leon is really kind of rubbing her nose in the dirt. You know, he's really throwing himself. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen with that. Or better yet, I wanna see, you know, I, I have a good feeling that the way things are going, Mo's gonna come back. So I'm ex waiting in and I'm waiting with expectation to see Mo back on the lunch hour. But yeah, that's my review. Um, again, if I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and I will be back with the next episode of Daytime Divas. So until then, everybody, take care.